So in 9.2, we've been working with how you find the vertex by using the formula x equals negative b over b. And in this section, our main question is going to be how do I apply this formula? And maybe we should put it in parentheses here. What formula am I talking about? The one for finding the axis of symmetry, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex. How do I apply this formula to a word problem involving, and what we kind of call it is projectile motion, but it's where something's being thrown or tossed. So let's just, a problem involving a thrown object. Let's put that on there. A thrown object. What I'd first like to do, though, is have you page ahead to make sure we can successfully find our axis of symmetry and our vertex to, on a non-word problem. So remember, it's actually this one we find first, even though sometimes they ask us to do it second. The formula for the axis of symmetry is x is equal to the opposite of b over twice a. It's a line. Um, and when we go up on here, we have an a of 1 a b of negative 4, and a c of 1. So we'd say x is equal to the opposite of b, which would be 4, over twice a, which means x equals 2 is my axis of symmetry. The vertex lives on the axis of symmetry, so its x-coordinate is also 2. And to get the y-coordinate, I have to go plug this in, because it says y is equal to, for every point on that curve, your y is equal to x squared, minus 4 times x plus 1. So in this case, it'd be 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1. So it'd be 4 minus 8 plus 1, or negative 4 plus 1, or negative 3. So I go down to these graphs down here and find out which one has an axis of symmetry. By the way, we can use other things to help us out since it's multiple choice. Because the A is positive, we know it opens up or it makes us smile. Um, it's got an axis of symmetry at 2, so I didn't even really need to know the vertex was at 2, negative 3. I know that B is the correct answer for number 1, and we'll just do two of these just for a quick review. So on number 2, again, to find that axis of symmetry, it's the line X equals the opposite of B over twice A, which would be the opposite of negative 8, which is 8, over twice A. This is A, B, C. We get 8 divided by negative 4, or negative 2. So the line x equals negative 2 is my axis of symmetry. Also, because this is negative, I know it opens down. That's probably all I need in a matching situation. So let's go see which one opens down and has an axis of symmetry at x equals negative 2. This is no, it's making a smile, so it would have led in a positive. This one's opening down, but its axis of symmetry is at x equals 1. So here it is, right here, letter D. It's opening down. Its splitter, or its axis of symmetry, is the line x equals negative 2. And here's my vertex sitting here at negative 2, 5. Let's have that fall out with the formula, just with one more bit of practice. Remember, the vertex is living on the axis of symmetry, so it has an x value of negative 2. To get the y value, I use my model that says y is equal to the opposite of 2 times x squared minus 8 times x minus 3. And I want to know what that y value is when x is a negative 2. So, uh, using my rule of order, negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Then I have negative times a negative makes a plus 16 minus 3 which is going to give me an 8 minus 3, which is 5. So that formula and that process coincides with the graph of letter D. So just two of the non-word problems. Now I'd like to go back and we're going to do the word problems. So what we do is we're going to apply this concept of a vertex to find the height of an object that gets thrown or tossed. Anything that goes up must come down. This could get applied to something as simple as a football or something as complex as a missile. But what goes up must come down, and this is a physics model that gives you the height of the object after ever, any given time. T is time going in, so it's kind of like your x. H is height coming out. 
And there are two things that control basically the height of, let's say, a football when you throw it. One would be the speed at which you throw it, which is called its velocity. Velocity actually can be positive or negative, but in our case, we're going to have it be positive because we're not going to be um, throwing things backwards or going in reverse. So for our purposes, velocity is the speed. That obviously will affect how far a football goes. If I just kind of give it a little tiny toss without much initial speed to it, it's not going to go very high. Likewise, this is the starting height. If I throw a football off the top of a building, it's obviously going to get way higher than if I threw it from ground level. So we've got some variables going in here. H stands for the height in feet of the object. T stands for the time in seconds. Um, v stands for velocity, which for our purposes is going to equal speed. Actually, velocity can be negative, but we're not using it in that context. And C is what we consider to be the starting height. If it's a five foot tall person throwing it, the starting height is five feet as long as he's at ground level. If he's standing on top of a 60 foot tall building, then the starting height would be the 60 foot tall building plus his height of five feet. Well, in the model, where does the negative 16 come from? That actually comes from the gravitational constant on Earth. And on Earth, the gravitational constant is negative 32 feet per second. But in the derivation of that formula, there ends up being a half involved. And basically, it comes from gravity, which on Earth, as long as we're on Earth, this model's the same for every object that's being thrown or tossed. So here, we've got a problem. It's halftime at a football game, basketball game. And they're throwing and launching from five feet tall t-shirt up into a crowd and it's making a parabolic shape and it says that it's launched from a height of five feet just a second here I think my screen doesn't show that too well so I'm going to move that over as best I could but you have it in your note packet anyway it's shot from a height of five feet well what is that in our model that five feet right there is actually the C it's the starting height with an upward velocity of 72 feet per second, so 72 is our V. And the fact that it's caught 35 feet above doesn't affect our first question. Um, so let's model this with more of a parabola here so you can see what we've got going. All right, we've got basically, if I lay that situation out on the xy axis, I've got time going in, that's my x. And I've got the height of the teacher coming out, and that's my Y. It's starting at a height of five feet. So this could be a little five foot tall person here throwing it. It's going up, and it's getting caught right here. And that right there represents 30, a height of 35 feet. So what we've got is, we've got our model that says the height of that T-shirt is modeled by negative 16 T squared plus the velocity times time plus the starting height. You do not need to memorize that. That will be given to you every time. And to use that, what we need to do is go replace the variables they gave us, which is a velocity of 72 feet per second and a starting height of 5 feet. And the question is, how long will it take for it to reach its maximum height? Well, let's go to the maximum height here. Um, the maximum height is really the point at the peak. It's really found at the vertex. So if I can find the vertex, I know how long it'll take to reach its maximum height. So really, this used to be x and y, and now it's actually t and h. And I have a formula for that. It says that the x is equal to, at the vertex, which for us is the time, is negative b over twice a. Notice I'm not doing anything different than I did in the non-word problem. So I'm going to do negative 72 over twice a, which would be 2 times negative 16. That would give me negative 72 over negative 32. And if you go do that on a calculator, you're going to get 2.25. Well, 2.25 what? This is representing time, and we're in seconds. 
So it's 2.25 seconds. What does that mean? It means that after the shirt gets launched, it reaches its maximum height up here at this point at 2.25 seconds. It's the x coordinate of the vertex. Well, the next question says, what is the maximum height? Well, really, I'm asking you, just like we did on those last problems, what's the y value at the vertex? I know it maxes out 2.25 seconds in, but how high does it get? Well, to determine that, we go to our model, where it says our height is equal to negative 16 times time squared plus 72 times time plus 5. Right here, I have a model for this situation. I want to know how high it gets after 2.25 seconds. So I just go plug a 2.25 in here. And what that means is you need to go get a calculator and figure it out on the calculator. And if you do, and enter it correctly, you'll get 86 feet. So after two and a half seconds, the t-shirt reaches a maximum height of 86 feet. When it asks for the range that models the height of the t-shirt, this is kind of a little extra question. We don't always test you on this question. But just to repeat, it started off five feet. It went up, it peaked out at 86 feet, and then somebody caught it 35 feet up into the crowd. So then remember this point is the point two and a quarter seconds in, it reached a maximum height of 86 feet. When I talk about the range of a function, that's what can come out. We said it's what y can be, but in this case, our y-axis is actually the heights of the t-shirt. So I'm looking for parameters or boundaries on what the height can be. Well, but because it was caught up here in the crowd, and because it was launched from a height of five feet, the lowest that t-shirt's ever going to be is five feet. The highest it's ever going to get is up here at 86 feet. So when I talk about the range, I'm kind of talking about these horizontal lines that trap the parabola within it. What, what are the possible heights? And I'd say that they are between 5 and 86. Never will that t-shirt be below 5 feet, and never will it be over 86 feet. And usually we write that algebraically like this. And again, Range is generally considered y, but in word problems, that y-axis represents something. In this case, it represents the height. So let's go on to the next one and do one more here. So I've got a very similar problem. On this one, I've got my height. And remember our model, negative 16t squared plus velocity times time plus starting height. And in it, they gave me the initial velocity. It's a ball being kicked. It's got an initial velocity of... 64 feet per second, and it's being kicked from a height of 2 feet. Well, what that means is i got a little foot here, kicking the ball. It's going up, and it's coming down. Well, let's put that on the coordinate system here. All right. It starts at a height of 2 feet. It goes up and it comes down. I am being asked what, when will it reach its maximum height, aka where's the vertex, all right? This is time, this is height. So x is time, y is height. Well, x is equal to the opposite of b over twice a. And in this case, it's representing my time or how long it takes to get that high up. So I do negative b over twice a which ends up being 2. So what that means is after 2 seconds, that ball is the highest it'll ever be. And the next question says, well, how high did it get? Well, again, in order for me, I know that after 2 seconds it peaked out. How high did it get? I go back to my model, and I say its height is negative 16 times squared plus 64 times the time plus 2. And I want to know how high it gets after two seconds. And when you go plug that in on your calculator, you're going to get 66 feet. So the maximum height is 66 feet. And I might get cut off here, I'm almost done. But for the range, again, the range is represented by the big parameters. What can come out of the function? What can the heights be? Well, the lowest on this one the height ever is is actually zero because nobody caught the ball. It didn't say that. It must have hit the ground. So my height is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, and it maxed out up here at 66 feet. So that's the end of this section.
Have a great day.